They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California, Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. I know, I know, I know we said we were done for the year, but it's December, and I just, we still can't get over it. We still can't forget That two years ago, in 2021, a scandal, a stealing, a theft, a black eye on the sport happened. And uh, PJ, can you say it for me? Uh, Abu Dhabi? Abu Dhabi? A robbery. Abu Dhabi 2021? I don't even want to say, like, oh, like it was a robbery or something. But yeah, Abu Dhabi 2021. Say the word for me, because, you know, sometimes I, I say it and Mike always gets on me because I say it wrong. So just before you say the word for me, we got PJ in in the house again as a, our special guest um, co-host today to talk about Abu Dubai. Uh, is that right? Adanabi? Ab- Abu Dhabi. Ugh, Abu Dhabi, uh, because Mike is in the studio recording his new album. Uh, you know, I mean, he already has an album in the bank. I don't know why he's recording another one, but what, 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 whatever. Did, do you have one of his albums, uh, PJ? No, not yet. <laughs> have you ever heard of any of his music? Nope. Yeah, and 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 probably nobody in the audience has. But one day, one day, he may sell one record. Anyhow, <laughs> two years ago, Michael Massey who thought the race shouldn't end under a safety car because he wanted to bring racing and excitement in the last race to the audience on his own, ignored all the rules that we've been racing with for time immemorial and did his own thing. So that pretty much sums it up in that Lewis Hamilton, who was winning over Max Verstappen by 12 seconds, ended up having a one-race shootout and losing the championship. And some people, and I think most fans, can't get over it. What's your take on that, PJ? Well, I got over it right when it happened because I wanted Max to win back then. So I haven't really thought about it much since. But now looking back at it, you know, two years I could say that you know a lot of shady stuff did happen that night, but when I when I watched it live, I was like freaking out, like yes, yes, Max won the championship, and now that Max has won two years in a row and the seasons have been boring, I'm like, damn, Lewis should have won that eighth. Because do you think if he would have won that eighth, he probably might have retired right there, right, retire on top and just do you know other things. Yeah, I really think he would have, like, right when he, on the podium right there, he would have just, like, announced, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to retire. Like, if he would have got that eighth title. But now he's fighting to get an eighth with, like, third best car on the grid. You know, he's doing all he can right now. And I would I would argue it's the fifth best car. Um, I think before we go off into a tangent, I would say Red Bull. Then I would say... The, at the end of the year, McLaren, and then Ferrari, and then Aston Martin, and then Mercedes. And then if you took it to the beginning half of the year, it was Red Bull, and then it was Aston Martin, and then it was Ferrari, and then it was Mercedes. So I, I think they're fourth or fifth best car overall on the grid uh, this year. And yeah, I think there was no... Second best car, I think they all flip flopped from track to track. You know, Ferrari was the best, the second best at Monza, probably the best at Singapore. And then you had like Aston Martin was really good at certain tracks. McLaren was really good at like Silverstone and Qatar and all that. Just they flip flopped a lot. Let me get into breaking down 
for all the new people who really maybe you just onboarded into Formula One. Maybe Vegas was your first race. Maybe this year was your first race that you've either watched or attended or maybe it was last year and you've heard about the scandal and you really don't know much about it or maybe you've never heard about it or maybe you wanted just a different take on it because we're going to be 100 percent down the middle and give you both perspectives so let's break it down on lap one max was on pole by the way hamilton had qualified second ham overtakes right away right right as soon as the race starts he gets a great start he's in the lead into turn one and Max dives in on turn six. He, he dives in. Hamilton kind of left the door open because no one usually passes there. And so he wasn't expecting Max to pass. But when he do- dove in, he kind of pushed Hamilton off of the track. Well, he didn't kind of. He pushed Hamilton off the track, which is his style. Either you move out of the way for Max or you crash. And so Hamilton went off on the runoff and just cut the whole chicane and then came out in front. And he never gave the place back. And so, obviously, Max was complaining about it. uh, But the stewards said, you know, you pushed him off. And they had made such a ruling earlier in the year, which Hamilton had seen, where Max would push somebody off or somebody would push Max off. He would go off and never give the position back. And they never did anything about it. So I'm pretty sure he did his homework on that. He was pushed off. He never uh, gave the position back to Max. And the race continued. That was lap one. You got any take on lap one, uh, PJ? Yeah, I I think personally that he should have given the position back. That's just my take because Hamilton gained like quite a bit of time just cutting that corner and going straight under that that straight there in Abu Dhabi, and he you know he gained that position and kept it for geez like quite a bit until Checo held him up. So I just, that's just my opinion. But the stewards, you know, they were super inconsistent that year. So. They were they were super inconsistent. Like one minute was this, one minute was that. But the one thing they were consistent about is that Max could do whatever he wanted. So <laughs> right, he still <laughs> what he still does he still does that now. He's done it for the last three years: twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three. They created a monster by him being able to do whatever he wants and him not being penalized. So now he knows that he's enabled, just like a. A petulant child, you just he'll keep pushing the envelope until you smack his hand. On lap twenty, Hamilton was cruising, and he had a pretty decent lead, and he pit for new tires, and so did Max, uh, which left Checo out. They didn't pit Checo, and he was on old tires, but it he inherited the lead at that moment, and he did some of the best defensive driving and that we've seen in quite a while and reminded me a lot of Alonzo where for two laps, I mean, he backed Hamilton up right into Verstappen who was at that time probably like 10 to 12 seconds behind Hamilton and then he backed him up and next thing you know, um, Max was only like two seconds behind. If that was some of the best Defensive driving I've ever seen. That was that made Checo to me like a top driver. When I saw that, I'm like, damn, he really he can do it. Like he's so darn good, and it it just is incredible to watch live. Yeah, it was watching some of the amazing defensive and the lines that he took. And you know, when you when they when you hear the term backing up, people go, how how do they do that? Do they just slow down or? so it's not done obviously on the straight because if you slow down on the straight, they just the, the faster car would just pass you up. And remember, when you're backing up someone, it's usually done on the turn, and it's done near the apex of the turn. You slow down because they can't pass you. It's very hard for them. They have to hit their brakes and slow down because it's very hard once you hit that apex of the turn for them to pass 
because you're at the apex of the turn. And so when you're coming out of that turn, you, then you can resume your speed. And so at every turn, at every apex, you kind of slow down and you back them up because you know they can't pass you. We can't slow down too much because they could dive down on the inside, but it's really going to be hard for them to do so under braking. And it's also going to be hard for them to go around you since you're taking up most of the apex since you're in the lead. So that's how they back you up. That's what Hamilton was trying to do. Remember when he lost to Rosberg in 2016, he was backing up the field, hoping that either Rosberg would crash or that he'd be able, you know, by backing him up somehow he, he could win that way because Rosberg had to finish over. I think it was he had to be fourth or fifth uh, to win the championship. And then he figured if he backed him up enough, somebody else would pass him. So that's what backing up is. Um, on lap 21, Hamilton finally overtakes Perez, but Max was only 1.169 seconds behind, which in a shadow of a hair of a second, he'd be right in DRS range. Right. Uh, but one, one other thing about Perez that made it so impressive to me was he did all of that well, on like super old and destroyed softs. Like he, he held Hamilton back on like dead tires, which made it so impressive to me. And that's why when when I see him, when he went into that funk this year, I was like, man, this guy, he has it. But he's such a good defensive driver. But I think he does have problems uh, setting up his car for overtakes. And that's where we saw this year where, you know, in the second well, in the fastest car and, and him being the second fastest, you know, in the fastest car, being the second driver, he couldn't really take those into like sec- a lot of second places and a lot of third places and a lot of podiums, which you think all the other top drivers would have been able to do. But since the car is made for Max and his driving style is so uh, front heavy, it makes it really, really hard for other drivers to get into that second car and do anything. But continuing on, we're going to lap 37 where Antonio Giovanni, what was it? It's not Giovanni, Giovanni. Huh? Is Antonio Giovanni. In the Alfa Romeo, he forced, he was forced to retire. You know, he had some engine problems and then Ham stayed out. While Ver- Verstappen pitted under the, the uh, virtual safety car, which saves about 15 seconds, right? Or about 10, yeah, mm, probably saves about probably 10 seconds. A normal pit stop there would have been about 25 seconds. Under the virtual safety car, you're probably going to pit. It's going to be about 14 seconds. So it's going to save him some time. And then when he comes out of the pits, um, he wouldn't be as far back if, if he was doing a normal pit stop. And that was probably... Right, and, Hamilton... Go ahead. Hamilton, he, by not pitting, he actually maintained track position, which actually, in, if the whole scandal didn't happen, he would have won because of this decision. Right, but that was just the virtual. And then here we go. We get to, down to the nitty-gritty. On lap 53, with five laps left, Lewis Hamilton has a 12-second lead over Max Verstappen. Nicholas Latifi, with no other cars around him, he had been battling, you know, I mean, he's battling in the back. He, he's Mick Schumacher huh? was yes. battling. Was it Mick? It was him? Mick. It was. He was battling with Mick Schumacher for a couple laps, and he was on the dirty side of the track, and for whatever reason, he oversteered, lost control, and ran into the wall. Now, most people are saying, how can you run into the wall when there's no one around you? But he remember, he was battling. He's probably in the wash. He's not a top-tier driver, so he's not used to handling those situations like the other drivers are. He's on the dirty side of the track. And he just hit the he hit the gas when he probably should have been coasting or braking, um, and it just washed him you know, right into the wall. Do you remember that, PJ? Right, I remember. I, yeah, I remember watching 
like the middle part of that race when it was like pretty clear that like Hamilton was going to win and the other guy wanted Max to win that then I was just like hoping and praying something would happen and what do you know the TC crashes into the wall I'm like yes 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 here we go something's gonna happen like safety car or whatever red flag and I was like jumping up and down but you know now I look back and like damn Hamilton should have won that but yeah continue well then a full safety car because there was so much debris they couldn't do a virtual safety car so they went to a full safety car and then Max, taking advantage of that, he pitted for soft. But here's where, here's the rub. People are always saying, well, you know, Mercedes should have pitted. Mercedes should have pitted. But what they forget and what they fail to realize is Hamilton had already passed the pit lane. Okay? So that would have meant for him to do another lap and then come in. And then Max would have already had pitted and came out. So he would have lost track position. And remember... This was winner take all. Whoever finished ahead of the other person was the world champion. So if they did that, if Mercedes had pitted Hamilton, then he would have came out behind Max and thus lost the world championship. So they had to stay out. Right. Um, I going to say... Oh, yeah. What, what I would have done in this situation is if I was Michael Massey, I would have red flagged it instead of a safety car because that way they could just, you know, Lewis and Max would have like a one lap shootout on even tires, even playing field, no lapped cars. That way it would really be winner takes all, you know, no, you know, no bullshit, just all skill, all driver, one lap. Yeah. People, yeah. I want you to listen to that take. And PJ, go over that again, because when you listen to all these other channels, when you listen to all these other pundits, you never hear them talk about, he should have went to a red flag. You never hear it, but you're hearing it here now on America F1. PJ, give me that take again. All right. Well, right when Latifi crashed, Michael Massey should have immediately red flagged it. That way, everyone can go in the pits, everyone can pit, and then, you know, re- do the whole re, uh, standing start grid restart scenario, and then have, you know, Lewis would be in first, Max would be in second, and they could have, a, you know, one lap shootout, or however many laps were left at the end. Was it, what, five? Yeah, that was lap 53 that Latifi had crashed, so it would probably... Yeah, it, was, yeah. He said, it would have been four lap shootout in softs. So it would have just been all driver, all skill right there. Yes, I agree with that 100%. No one ever talks about that. No one ever says it should have been red flagged. Everyone always talks about, oh, well, Hamilton and Mercedes should have pitted and and everything would have been, you know, it's their own fault. No, no. If you know anything about racing, if you watch the races, you know Track position is everything, especially with a couple of laps left. Why would they pit him if Max, when Max pitted and he came out, Hamilton had a 12 second lead at that point. That race is over. There is no reason for him to pit with five laps to go and a 12 second lead. It doesn't make any sense. So all the people who say that, just stop it. Stop it, stop it, and stop it, because it's ludicrous. <laughs> it's ludicrous, I say. <laughs> On lap 56, there's f- they let five of the unlapped cars catch up, which we are supposed to let all the unlapped cars catch up. And those, those cars were, uh, I think it was, it was Lando... Alonzo, Ocon, Leclerc, and Vettel. But remember, the other lap cars were Ricardo and Lance Stroll and Schumacher. Now, they didn't let those cars unlap. Now, remember, that was because Carlos Sainz was in third place. He was also on Fresh Softs. No one ever talks about that. Isn't he trying to win a race? Isn't he competing to win a race? They never let the cars between him and Verstappen 
unlap. They only unlap the cars between Hamilton and Max. At that time, did you know that rule, PJ? I didn't actually know that. Um, if I, well, I did know that they that I remember Christian called Michael Massey, which is like to me very fishy. He was like, "Oh, what are these lap cars doing in the way?" And then he's like, "Michael's like, oh, let me give me a moment, let me get this incident clear." And he's like, "Yeah, let's get these lap cars out of the way." I'm like, what? That to me just sounded strange. That was also um, another and then bad part of uh, the officiating and just the ruling. Why are you having? Principals being able to call uh, the race director during the race and try to influence him on what he should be doing. You know, subsequently, they stopped that. And like now they can't call at all. But it's just think about we're on the six yard line of the Super Bowl. The head coach <laughs> calls the head referee and says, hey, I want you to watch out for this. Or they made a pass interference call and they and. They say, hey, you got to call pass interference on that because of this, that, and the other. And the guy goes, uh, oh, okay, we'll call pass interference. I mean, what other sport is the head of the team being able to call one of the head referees of the race or in our, our instance, the judge or one of the officials and, and, and influence him and change his mind or tell him what he needs to do? What other sport? There's no other sport where you can do that. It, it's it's insane. It's insane. So they let those. Now I'm going to read the ruling on this. Okay, so the five unlap cars got to catch up to Hamilton and is in between Max and um, Lewis, but not all the lap cars. Article forty eight point one two states any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap of the safety car. And then the safety car has to do one additional, listen to my wording, one additional lap and then go in. Neither of those things happen in Abu Dubai 2021. Neither of those things. They're explicitly in the rule book. And both of those things were ignored. Yeah, that um, Michael Massey, then they then they never the ruling was like, oh, it's human error or whatever. That's what they said after the investigation was done. It was a you know misjudgment by the race director. That's that's what they said. That's what they said. And it looks like the race will end under safety car because that's what everybody's expecting. Um but instead, of, the rule was ignored. Those cars were brought in, setting up a final lap shootout with Max Verstappen on soft tires and Lewis Hamilton on old. I think he was on old hards. Which is like no contest at all. He actually did a good job considering he was on old hards. He almost, he almost got him back on the other straight. Yes. You know, there's like that side straight on the back. He almost overtook him again. Now, the crazy thing is while the teams were so really in pandemonium and upset about this was at first the message came from the stewards that lap cars will not be allowed to overtake. So they're saying none of the lap cars are going to be allowed to overtake. So if that was the case, then... They would have resumed the race, and Max was 12 seconds back, so game over. But then, almost four minutes later, lap cars number 4, 14, 31, and 16, and 5 will be allowed to overtake the safety car. Then, instead of the safety car going the additional lap, they called the safety car in right away. That set up a one-lap shootout. The other controversy is when you look at the video and you look at it and you break it down, slow it down, Max is right beside Hamilton before. Because usually when you get the restart, the, the race leader gets to decide when he gets to go. You know, it's going to be on the turn. It's going to be on the straight. You have to do it before this certain line. But you can do it anywhere. But no one else can overtake you or overtake the safety car. 
Max Verstappen, if you look at it and you slow it down, he's right beside Lewis on the restart. And he goes ahead a couple times of Lewis Hamilton. So right there, that that should have been null and void. You can't do that. But they didn't penalize that. So when Lewis starts, I mean, Max is right next to him. Now, subsequently, they, they got rid of that rule and they said, well, you have to be not beside, but behind the lead car at the race at the race restart when we have a, um, you know, a moving restart of a race instead of beside because Max was doing, and he was doing that all that year. If, if, if you can recall, he was doing it all that year. He'd be right up next to him on the restart, which I thought was smart because if the rules are going to allow it, I mean, why not do it? And that was the Max Verstappen special was to like, like sit there like right next to the car on the safety card, like, egg him on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then he, he even, like, I remember Mercedes protested because he, at one point, was ahead of Hamilton, but, like, just a hair. Because mm-hmm. he was, like, accelerating, accelerating. And then, like, Mercedes said that, like, he was ahead just for a moment. But then the FIA threw that out. Yeah, the FIA, not only did they throw that out, so Mercedes, a- after the race, obviously, Max for stepping one and was crowned world champion. And let's talk about the aftermath. We have the shot of uh, Lewis Hamilton's dad going over to Lewis and Lewis is dejected and he's talking to him in his ear about, you know, it's really never came out what, what what's being said, but I can only surmise that he's saying, you know, they've always been against you. You know that we've tried so hard and we had to turn all these barriers and at every step of the way they've been trying to stop you. And you have to be the better man and go congratulate him. It's going to hurt. Go congratulate him and show him the real champion that you are. And I'm pretty sure that's what I would have said to my son. And I'm pretty sure that's what he's saying to him. Now, conversely, on the other side, you have Max Verstappen, who's like elated. And he's just crying because, you know, all the hard work and stuff that he's put in. I mean, he he wants to be world champion, too. And let's not forget that. And his dad, you know, sacrificing. And I think that, you know, they got a divorce from his because his dad was always spending time with Max and, you know, ignoring the family, the wife and the other uh, children. And so a lot goes into being world champion, you know, for for the family. And so they're talking. And then you see Lewis come over and congratulate him and his dad, and his dad congratulate the other dad. Do you ever think that would have happened if this was the other way around, PJ? No, because Yasser Sapin is an asshole. But yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> yes, he is. But do you think Max would yeah. go over and do that? No, I don't. I think he would have just got on the podium like, ha ha, yes, it's simply lovely, you know. So that's what he would have done. And he might have even um, left the podium, but, knowing him, because he's done that before when he got like a little five second penalty. He left early, right? I just don't. Yeah, Yoss, like every time Max even gets second, he gets pissed off. Like that's just pathetic. Like I think it was at um, the race before that, Saudi Arabia, or was that? Yeah, Saudi Arabia. He when Max got rendered by uh, Lewis or whatever that stupid, whatever that was. That like I'll oh, get to get the place place back, and he like break checked Lewis or whatever. Yeah, and then he like hit the table and was all upset. He got all mad. So I was like, "Damn, he's just he's just pathetic, and he's just he's an ass." So what did some? What were some of the other drivers saying? The other drivers just couldn't believe it. Some of them said, "Well, obviously, Lewis said this has been manipulated, man." And then uh, Lando said, "For it to end that way, I'm not so sure." Um, Another driver said, I'm glad I'm not part of that. Whatever just happened seems pretty fucked up. Another driver said, I can't understand. I should be able to overtake the safety car, shouldn't I? It was total confusion. And everybody knew that what was going on was wrong. And they didn't want to participate in that at all. And they could only imagine... Well, hell, if they're doing it to a seven-time world champion, what would they do to me? They give two fucks, right? Yeah, I remember uh, Science was like saying, "Like, what is going on?" And so he's like, "This is very unfair because like he could have actually challenged for the win, 
if yeah. they would have red flagged it or I, did the whole all left. Yeah, I, I think he could have challenged for the win too because he had softs on also. Yeah, for, you know? Yeah, and then um, Daniel Ricardo was the one that said that uh, like it's very fucked up. I remember he said that and he was like, I'm not going to say anything. It's like a title was decided over that, so I'm just going to not say anything. Or he said that after the race. So the second protest was any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the car on the lead lap and the safety car. And so what Red Bull in the protest said, well, any doesn't mean all. So they use semantics. Any does not mean all. So some of the cars pass. Not all the cars pass, but the rule and regulation doesn't say all. And they got away with it. Yeah, they 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 use all the gray areas they could in that in that ruling. Like anything that they could get away with, they they did. That was Red Bull during that whole scandal, and the FAA just kind of let them do it because they just they they kind of made you know they they know they made a mistake and they've been caught out, and they just kind of let Red Bull do what they want. Yeah, I was surprised that a lot of the pundits during that time, they just got right back on the Red Bull wagon and was like, you know, Max Verstappen's the world champion. It's incredible. What a great race, blah, blah, blah. And none of them said, wait, what? what's going on here? This should be protested. Like, they just ignored all the rules. But I guess you can't do that in a celebration because you're going to down the celebration. So you got to kind of just flow with it. Or what do you think, PJ? Would you have said something if you were commentating that race? Would you have been like, what the F is going on here? Like, this has been stolen. This has been manipulated. I guess you can't say that because they probably fire you, huh? Well, yeah, I remember uh, watching. It was on Sky Sports, you know, the, the Croft, you know, David Croft. He was saying some stuff like him and Martin Brundle were saying some stuff. And they just quickly were immediately were like, oh, like celebrate Max. Why you? I would have said like why not red flag the race like I was saying earlier like what what was the what was the thinking behind this decision red flagging would have been much more made much more uh, sense yeah I agree 100% it would have been better to do that and before a lot of a lot of people bring up well before the race if if Hamilton wouldn't have uh crashed or if he would have done better during the year because Max had a better year that's why Max should be the champion and then I say to that Hamilton won three races in a row just to get to that point. Okay, not only did he win three races in a row, but if it wasn't for uh, Amalia in uh, Italy, where Max Verstappen had a bad pit stop, and I think his pit stop was like 11 seconds, and Hamilton had a bad pit stop too, but it was like you know the usual Mercedes bad pit stop, which is around 4.2 seconds, which they do a lot of. I knew when I saw Max come out and Hamilton just was passing up the pit lane, I predicted, I was watching the race, I said, I'll bet you any money on this turn, Max Verstappen is going to crash into him. Because he already knows that if Hamilton goes away, it's over. He's going to win that race and probably the championship. And if Max crashes into him, well, he's still going to be ahead because then they both don't get any points. Yeah, that was in uh, that was actually in Monza, not not in Mola. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because Daniel Ricciardo ended up winning that race, which is just, well, we, everyone wanted to see that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, 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 that was great for Daniel, but that was the race that. And then the other thing that would have made a difference is in Baku when Max had already uh, was already out of the race. All Lewis had to do was just finish in the top 10. He was already running. I think he was running third or maybe second. No, I think he was running third. Just finish in the top 10, you know, secure that. And on the restart, he just gassed, the, burnt, burnt through the tires really too quickly. They didn't have enough grip. And he went straight off into the runoff area. And then by the time he got back on, he was like dead last. They, they both had like plenty of dns and bad luck because there was that one there was monza there was uh silverstone then there was um botas bowling in hungary uh yeah then there was 
Yeah, they had tons of DNFs, both of them. So it, it was an equal. I think they both had an equally good. You know, they had the, the same season in my mind. So it was an equal playing field when they got to Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and a lot of people are always saying, "Oh, well, Max had a better season. He had more of this. He had more of that." But when it all came down to it, somehow, some way, they came into the last race equal in points, and all one had to do was finish ahead of the other. And they took it away from the guy because they were tired of him. They're tired of Mercedes winning. They're tired of Hamilton winning. Bernie Eccleston had already said in an interview, this is where we're going into our conspiracies now. Bernie Eccleston had already said he never wanted Lewis Hamilton to break Michael Schumacher's record. But on the other hand, if Sebastian Vettel or Max Verstappen broke Michael Schumacher's record, he was all for it. Which seemed tad bit, tad bit racist to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I I agree. I think the FAA is like, you know, a little bit racist because they they also like this year they they you know they gave Max so much bias and they like you know attacked Lewis like they gave him a ten second penalty I think in Austria for like bullshit and then they also like. They screwed over science too in in Australia. They gave him a you know penalty for a lap that didn't even exist. So just like FAA, and then they treat Max like the golden child. So it just doesn't doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I don't get it. I mean, Mike always says, "Well, he's blonde haired and he's blue eyed, and that's what they want. They want you know the the Austrian type look, and you know, and that's what they're going for. But you know, it's a global sport now, and." Not only that, you have on board a lot of uh, non-Caucasian people because you got Perez in there, because you have Lewis in there, because you got Yuki in there. And people want to see other people that look like them race and do well. Right. Like more, more than half the grid now is not of like white. Descent. You have Yuki, you have Joe, you have Albon, you have Lewis. Yeah, Perez. I mean, Sainz and Fernando are Spanish. They're still Caucasian, but you know, they're, like, they're Hispanic, right? So then you have like more than ha- almost half the grid is, you know, not just white, white. Yeah, and I, and I don't think there's anything wrong with embracing diversity. And as long as the guy can race, that's all I care about. You know, I always say put the best person in the car. Uh, we know in Formula One, it's some of the people who bring the money are going to race over the guy who has just as much talent or maybe more talent, but doesn't have the money. That's just how Formula One has always been because it costs money to get these cars up and running. You got to have sponsors. You got to bring something to the table unless you're a generational talent like Max was or a generational talent like Hamilton. Uh, Even Alonzo brought something to the table. And there are some guys on the grid that are just, way talented and they have to give them a spot but most of these guys come with quite a bit of money i mean look at logan sergeant Ugh, look at little sergeant. Ugh. yeah the whole pay driver argument like lance should have lance sort of lost his seat like three seasons ago he was like a not a pay driver but you know you'll be there forever because he's you know daddy's cash <laughs> We just had to talk about Abu Dubai 2021 in the month of December on its two year anniversary because I'm still not over it. Now, for this last segment, PJ is going to play Lewis Hamilton and I'm going to play Max Verstappen and we're going to give our reactions on to I'm going to say why I should wear the number one on my car because, well, I'm the best. All I do is race. When I'm not on the track, I'm on the video game and I'm racing. All I think about is racing, 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 racing. I'm not into this fashion stuff. I don't have these fancy outfits. I'm not coming with dogs. I'm not doing all this Atlantis stuff. You don't see me in New York. I'm not flying jet setting around with the Hollywood crowd. I'm just about the track. Oh, what do you want me to say? What Lewis 
Yeah, does, well, like, yeah. What his... would you do, yeah, prima donna? Huh? Let's see. Uh, hold on, man. Oh, I deserve to be number one <laughs> Come because on. I've diversified the sport. I've been, you know, seven-time world champion. I bring celebrities into F1. I get I got a glo- more global audience. I, you know, I bring fashion into the sport. I bring my influence into the sport. I bring a bigger social media following. I've been the better driver for 10 years. And your team broke all the rules and is corrupt. That's what I got to say. That's what you got to say? Well. Yep. Diversity don't win races. I don't care what oh. color you are on the grid. If you can drive, you should be there. If you can't drive, maybe you're too old. Maybe your time has passed. It's my time now. You had your time. Now it's my time. That's why I have the number one on the car. Because you haven't won since AD 2021. You haven't even won a race. I mean, that completely destroyed you. And now I'm the number one. Now I've won three times in a row. And I'm going to win next year too. Just watch. The only reason why you're winning is because your team has Adrian Dewey who like wrote the book on ground effects cars. So you have the best car by far and will continue to have the, the best car until 2026. Well, you have to have the best car to win. You had the best car for quite a many years and then you won. So now I got the best car and now I'm winning. Get used to it. At least I had a challenge and a title fight multiple times in 2017 and 2018 from Vettel. You've had no competition for the past three, two years. That's not my fault. I, I, I can't. I don't decide who gets in the second seat. All I do is drive the car. That that's what they pay me to do. That's what I do. You know, if they put Checo in the seat, he's in the seat. If they put Science is in the seat. He's in the seat. If they put uh, Albon in the seat, he's in the seat. If it's Gasly, you know, I, I don't get to. I don't get to choose. I don't make those decisions. All I do is. Well, you know, the team is centered around you. They don't put a driver that could actually challenge you for the title in the second seat, like Leclerc, like me, or Fernando. Well, you know, Schumacher didn't have too many challenges in his second seat, did he? You got to have a one driver and a number two driver. That's how you win championships. It's not my fault your team has a different philosophy. My team doesn't. I'm the number one driver. They get a number two to support me so I can win the championship. I would have won the championship without a number two driver. That's how many points I scored this year. I would have beat every other team by myself. So that's the philosophy we have. The team's built around me. That's how it should be. This is Formula One. We're here to win championships, and we're here to win constructor championships. And the best way to do that is to have a clear number two driver. That's what I got. That's what we have. If you don't have that, you need to talk to your team principal. Maybe you need to talk to your people. Well, Sainz and Leclerc are two equal number one drivers, and they seem to be going along well. Yeah, and where they finish? Where they finish? They don't have the car to fight for the championship. If they did, they'd destroy Red Bull because they have two fast drivers that are equal in status. Where Checo is clearly behind. Checo's a legend. I mean, he's a legend. And that's why we won the first championship. And ever since he's came to the team, we won two more. So you can say what you want, but Checo and I work very well together. Why? Because he knows he's the number two. And everyone knows I'm the number one, and that's how it's going to be. And long as he stays a happy number two, this partnership's just going to keep on going. You would have been better off with Valtteri Botas instead of bringing in Russell. All he's going to do is take points away from you. That's your fault. Well, I beat George this year by convincing him out. But the only reason why Checo is still in that seat is because you can win the championship by yourself. If you had you know, Mercedes or Ferrari actually challenging, you'd actually have to worry about this constructor championship and Checo is just too far behind to contribute if Sainz and Leclerc had the car or me and Russell had the car. 
Sounds like a lot of crying to me. Is there is there a baby crying around here? Does, does somebody hear a baby crying? Anybody? Hey, you want you wanted me to impersonate? So I did. I want to thank PJ for coming on the show again. We had a, a rousing time. Him as Lewis Hamilton and me as. Super Max Verstappen, champion. Lame. Max Verstappen, I should say. I want to thank everybody for tuning in on the show. This will be the last show of the year. We'll see you next year in 2024 here at America F1.